Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be frightened, Mary, for God has decided to bless you. You'll become pregnant and have a son, and you are to name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. But how can I have a baby? I am a virgin. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby born to you will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but she's already in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, and I am willing to accept whatever He wants. May everything you have said come true. And then, the angel left. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I wish you're awake, because I'm sleepy. So try to be awake. Okay? Today is the second Sunday of the Blessed Month of Kiek. Is it, or is it not? Yeah. It is not? Yeah. It is. Very good. It is the second Sunday of the Blessed Month of Kiak. And as we said last week, during the month of Kiak, the church used to read all the gospel readings of the Sundays from the first chapter of the gospel according to our teacher St. Luke. Exactly. According to our teacher St. Luke. Last Sunday... We heard about the Annunciation of Archangel Gabriel to Zacharias the priest, the birth of whom? The birth of whom? St. John the Baptist. And today, as we heard the Gospel reading and as we saw the video, the same Archangel Gabriel came six months later to proclaim the glad tidings. The Annunciation of the birth of whom? Jesus. Of our Lord Jesus Christ to whom? Jesus. To his mother St. Mary. Exactly. As you must have noticed, last Sunday or last week, St. Mary responded, I'm sorry, Zacharias the priest responded to the Annunciation with a question. What did he say? He said, how shall I know that? That's what he did, what he said. And in return for this question, what happened to him? He was punished. He was to be mute for the whole period until his son is born. Would you please be seated? Would you please be seated? And how did St. Mary respond to the Annunciation of Archangel Gabriel? She responded also with a question. What did she say? How can this be? Yes. Zacharias the priest said, 
How shall I know that? Well, she Mary said, how can this be? But she was not punished, just like Saint the Christ. Why? Why is that? Why is that? Yes. The question of the priest reflected what? A kind of disbelief or lack of faith. Exactly. He was lacking faith. He couldn't believe uh, the glad tidings that he received. But St. Mary, the question was reflecting submission. What's the meaning of submission? Yes, I'm willing to do this. But I need to do how this is going to happen. I need an explanation to know how the will of God will be fulfilled in my life. And that's why the angel explained to her what would become of her. And at the end she said this, let it be to me according to your word. I'm the maiden servant of the Lord. Correct? As a matter of fact, God loves this way. God certainly would love us to understand that we are willing to comply to his will and at the same time we need to know how can this be fulfilled is there any way that the will of God can be applied in a wrong way no there is a way that the will of God can be applied in a manly way in a wrong way let me give you a few examples Abraham do you remember he is the father of all the fathers he is the great grandfather of the nation of Israel he foreknew from the beginning God told him plainly that he is going to be a great nation he was barren he had no children and his wife too until a very old age what was his wife's name Sarah, exactly. God told him, you're going to be a great nation. And your children are going to be as many as the sand by the seashore. Did anyone count the sand on the seashore? Can you do this? So it means that his children are going to be countless. He knew this from the beginning. But he never wondered, how can this be done? How can this be done? And he thought to himself that the will of God can be achieved in a manly way. He thought by getting married to one of Sarah's maiden servants, he can fulfill the will of God. And that's what he did. And eventually, this proved to be probably the worst decision he ever made in his life. That was the will of God but without wondering how can this be you can go wrong another example do you remember his son Isaac what was his wife's name Rebecca what where what was his children's names Jacob and Esau exactly exactly we've spoken about them before Rebecca when she was pregnant with the twins God told her plainly that Jacob is going to be a master of his brother. Jacob is going to have the birthright. And when they were born, she never wondered how could this be? How could this be done? Just like what St. Mary did. And she thought to herself, we can do this by a trick. She pushed her son to do what? To steal the birthright by deception from his father. And we certainly all remember the story. She, she plotted a plan and she made her son Jacob go to his father, lie to him and steal the birthright by deception. And eventually she regretted this decision for the rest of her life. Also Moses, the greatest of all prophets in the Old Testament. God told him plainly, go, command the rock to yield water for the people to drink. He knew that the rock can yield water just by commanding it. 
Yet, he didn't obey. He didn't wonder how could this be. He went to the rock, and instead of commanding the rock, he beaten, okay, he struck the rock with his staff twice. It yielded the water. Yes, that's true, that's what happened. But eventually, well, what was his punishment? He was grounded from going into the promised land with the children of Israel as a punishment for his disobedience. So, the will of God for Abraham was to be a great nation, but not through the marriage with one of his uh, wife's maiden servants. And the will of God was for Jacob to have the birthright and to be a master of his brother, but not by deception and never by stealing. And also it was the will of God that the rock yields water, but not by hitting it. So we can do the will of God in a wrong way, because we do not wonder how can this be. Let us take another example, another positive example in the New Testament. Do you remember St. Anthony the Great? He is the father of all the monks. He foreknew from the beginning that God had a great plan for him to be saved. He has a great, God has a great plan for him to go to heaven. But he wondered to himself, how can this be? I don't know how can I go to heaven. So the young man called Anthony went into the church one Sunday morning. And when he entered, he heard the gospel reading. The deacon was saying, If you want to be perfect, go sell whatever you have, give it to the poor, and come follow me carrying the cross. And that's what he did. Straight away, after he partook of the Holy Communion, he left the church, he sold all what he had, and then he went to the outskirts of the city. He, led, he lived there by a water pond and a couple of palm trees. He stayed there worshiping God for a long time. But once upon a time, something very unusual happened. By the pond, he saw a woman. She came to bathe in the water of that pond. She and her friends. He started to go approach her and rebuke her for this shameless behavior. How would you do this, woman? Don't you know that I am a monk? And how did she respond to him? She told him, I don't think you're a monk. If you were a monk, you wouldn't have lived here. Monks don't live here. They live far deep in the desert. And although she was a kind of a, an indecent woman, yet he listened to her. He said to himself, Let it be to me according to your word. And he left his hut, he left his cottage, and went to the mountain by the Red Sea. In the desert he lived there in seclusion. That's the same spot where his monastery is standing now. We all know that God has a plan for each and every one of us. But, in general, God has a plan for you to be successful. God has a plan for you to be joyful. God has a plan for you to be prosperous. But, sometimes we might think, I can achieve success by cheating. Go to a test and cheat. Work and cheat. And this I'm going to be successful through. But could you possibly think that this is the will of God? Yeah. Never. Never. You can achieve success, but not the success that God has designed for you. You might think, God wants me to be prosperous and wealthy. I can do this by stealing. Could this possibly be the will of God? Yeah. Never. Never. Also, many people think that God wants me to be happy. So why shouldn't I do this by indulging in lusts and pleasures of this world? Could this possibly be the will of God? These are only manly means of achieving the will of God 
in a different way. But we need to ask, always ask, how can this be done? You need to know the will of God. It is our role to know the will of God by being filled with the Holy Spirit and to follow his instructions, to follow his plan in our lives. لو سمحتم احنا في عندنا هنا cry room معلش هي مش ممتازة ولكن ممكن تؤدي الغرض الى باو الامهات اللي موجودين في صحن الكنيسة ومعهم اطفال صغيرين الاطفال بيتحركوا تعبينهم وفي نفس الوقت بيشوشروا على اللي موجودين معانا فبالتالي لهم عارفين يصلوا ولا الاخرين عارفين يصلوا معلش سمحوني انا اسف بس لحد لما الاولاد يهدوا شوية يقدروا ان هم يتفضلوا بيهم في الكراي روم عندنا في الناحية الغربية من الكنيسة يقعدوا بس شوية كده ويتابعوا القداس من خلال المونيترز ويقدروا لما الولاد يسكدوا يجوا يكملوا معنا القداس ويقدروا يتقدموا للتناول معلش انا اسف سامحوني بقول لكم للمرة التانية بس احنا محتاجين هدوء في صحن الكنيسة انتوا عارفين الكنيسة مش كبيرة فمن فضلكم we need to follow the instructions of the ushers احنا في عندنا هنا خدام مسؤوليتهم حفظ النظام فيريد يعني نسمع الخدام ونكون متعاونين معاهم لأجل خاطر الجميع مش عايزين حد يعثر لأي سبب من الأسباب Again In order to know how can this be done we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit and we can do this through fervent prayers we need to pray all the time don't pray just once or twice and say that's it I have prayed and God did not reveal anything to me. St. Mary has been praying all her life. When she received this, she was about 15 or 16 years old. She's been praying all through her life and only then when she received, she received this annunciation, she was glad and she was willing to learn how can this be done. We can be filled with the Holy Spirit by reading the gospel, reading the words, the very words of God, partaking of the Holy Communion, coming to church so often, confessing and asking Abuna and our spiritual leaders, how can this be done? And when I'm really sure that this is the will of God and this is the way God designed for me to follow, I should always respond just like St. Mary did. And she said, let it be to me according to your will. Glory be to God for